I'm going to actually hand this directly off to Mario from FOSS Asia. He's going to be talking with you guys about all the great things that they're doing. Um, they are located back there with the red tablecloths. Mario, go ahead and tell us all, all the awesome things that you guys are doing at FOSS Asia. Thank you very much. So, hello guys. and. Um yeah, the slides are coming up in a moment as well. So, um, my name is Mario, I'm here from Germany. Um, yeah, many years I was based in Asia, in uh, Vietnam and in Singapore, been to China many times, been to Taiwan. So, we are an international community um, based out of Asia, but like uh, working with people all around the world and we felt that free and open source solutions need a real push um, around the world. So we said like, let's call um, our community and our organization Force Asia. So let me talk a little bit about the hardware projects that we do. So we exist for 10 years. Um, we started in uh, 2009 and originally it was a lot about software, but in this talk now I want to talk about hardware, which is like the big topic here in this cluster. And there's uh, so much a great overlap um, with all these projects here and so many interesting conversations um, that uh, we want to engage in. And um, yeah, let's uh, have this uh, session here um, part of this. So. Open hardware, what are we doing? Let me introduce to three projects that we are doing. For example, we are doing the Pocket Science Lab. Who has heard about the Pocket Science Lab uh, before? Pocket Science Lab, yeah? A few people, okay, great. But like actually most of it still don't know it. Um, so the Pocket Science Lab is um, a measuring device. Um, our idea is uh, to have a device that uh, scientists and students and um, people working with microelectronics can use to measure stuff. So uh, it has a lot of useful control and measurements tools, um, integrated components that can be used by pins, and we have different apps. So here, for example, you see the different pins that you can use to plug, it, uh, plug in and do some measurements. I will go into detail um, now more here. For example, so how it works, Ah, they told me to stand in the light, okay. So how it works is we have, for example, a mobile app, but you could also have a desktop app. So you have the mobile app and you connect the mobile app to our hardware um, the, uh, via USB, for example. But you could also use an ESP um, chip, solder it to the device, or, or you could use Bluetooth. But the standard way is the USB. And the USB then also powers the device. And here you see these small pins, and these small pins you can use then uh, to measure or you can extend them with sensors or with small electronics. So one way what we have then here on the um, screen is the um, mobile app screenshot. Uh, so you have a lot of different components here on the screenshot. So um, yeah, let me show you a little bit what we do uh, recently, for example, what we developed, um, we extended um, all these small um, instruments on the app uh, with map features. So you can now uh, say, okay, I did this measurement at a special location. And for example, you can share your measurement with your friends, with other students or so on. And uh, you can um, then say, okay, show me all the measurements that we did um, on a map. So we, by the way, it's also written, we have two different flavors. I know they, uh, at this conference, there are always a lot of fans of free and open source. And of course we love F-Droid. So we're really proud that we also support the F-Droid store here and that we run with OpenStreetMap on the F-Droid store. That's really cool. Um, yeah, and here are like a few more details, for example, of the oscilloscope. Uh, who needs an oscilloscope? Who likes oscilloscopes? Yeah? Oh, I see the majority raising their hands. This is always the thing that everyone wants. They want an oscilloscope. So oscilloscope, you can try it out. Um, we have uh, four different channels. You can also like install the app right away and uh, even if you don't have the hardware, um, you can, for example, use the microphone of the mobile phone and try out and sing into the microphone and then you can see the different waves uh, uh, from singing. So that's uh, very nice and um, yeah, has all the basic features of an oscilloscope. By the way, there's a QR code if you want to try it out, can um, get it right away. Then, um, yeah, built-in mic, what I just mentioned, just click on it and then you can use it and see what's going on. Another things that we have now, so we have all these instruments on the app. So for example, we have a lux meter, we have a barometer, you have all the uh, measurements, we even have a robotic arm, a lot of instruments. But the next step is that we want the device to be used as a data logger. So you can basically configure the device 
And I think it's a good time to give around the board that we have. I know you people are always like haptic, touching. Yes, so I give around the device. You can have a, you can have a look at the board. So, um, yeah, so the idea is now that we use the mobile phone, we connect the mobile phone to the board, to the device, and uh, there should be like a, a, a small um, battery connected to the device, small or big, like, you know, as long as you uh, need it. And um, then you can basically um, say, like, for example, measure every 10 minutes a certain data set. Yeah? And the device could be used as a data logger. You could distribute many devices and come back um, to the device or access it uh, through Wi-Fi and then like collect a lot of data. So that's the uh, next steps and we are like improving this uh, here more and more. Okay, next thing I already mentioned, robots. Yeah, that was an idea I didn't have. A community member, I think it was even one of the workshops here that we did last year, he said, oh, why don't you use it uh, to control robots? Yeah, and that's really nice. So you can basically um, use these pins um, with, uh, um, like, uh, with cables. And um, you see here on the robot, there are these small motors. So these small motors, they only cost $1 in Shenzhen. You can get it on you know, the Chinese stores. Um, they're not like super great, but like they're good enough for us. So for $1, you can get a motor and you can build a robotic arm. So basically, like for example, you can have four uh, robots uh, um, motors. So you have a robot motors and these motors are always 360 degrees in an angle. So you can actually say, make it 45, make it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, any degree you could uh, uh, tell it. And then what you do is you configure the degrees here and you drag and drop it into the line that you want to have um, uh, the change. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. What does it stand for? It stands for seconds. Who did video editing before? Video editing. Yeah? So I see, yeah, a few people. So in the video editing, you always have the timeline. Yeah? And you can drag and drop into a timeline. So what you can do here is you drag and drop the angle that you want into a timeline and this is a very easy way to control a robot and you can then just like extend the timeline more and more and in the future right you could imagine upload an algorithm download like certain movements or so right and you could share it i mean there are a lot of ways to develop this idea further but like for now it is really a big change because people always say wow a robot oh, this is the future and this is like advanced and so on. But actually, it's quite simple, right? I mean, you just control a motor and you control the, the angle of the motor and then you just have a lot of motors and you control the angles and this is how a robot moves. So once people understand this idea, they say, wow, I can do that, right? And like more and more people can engage and um, we hope to show this with this idea. The computer went out. Um, oh, okay, yeah, back again. That's great. So, um, yeah. By the way, if you want to try this out, this Pocket Science Lab, we have the workshops there behind. Um, you can just like um, go there and uh, check out what you can do. Um, this is a hacker congress, so please don't expect everything to always work in detail. For example, the oscilloscope that we have, that's already pretty well developed. Other components are work in progress. So we're looking forward to your feedback and um, to your um, uh, issues and reports. Ah, here, um, now, let me go a little bit also to the desktop app. So the desktop app was completely rewritten um, this summer. Uh, we used uh, Python and um, Electron and Web Technologies, basically. And uh, our goal is to make the desktop app look very similar to the Android app. Okay, now people say, oh, yeah, but desktop is so different. It's a completely different way of working with the user interface and so on. However... Our goal is also um, to provide these tools um, for schools. So in the schools, if you tell the teacher, one student has an app, for example, an Android, the other uses this on desktop, and in the future maybe we have an iOS app, and every user interface looks different, it makes it difficult for the teacher. So let's try to make all the user interfaces as similar as possible and also make it compatible. So if I store something, if I collect data on the Android app, I should be able to download this data and like 
continue, uh, for example, to, to view it or like, you know, research into it on the desktop app. So everything is compatible. It's just a simple CSV file that you can export and import um, and on whatever app you are. Okay, so we already have the logic analyzer as well, multimeter, robotic arm, it's all on the desktop as well. Cool, and um, yeah, PS Lab is one project, and I said I will talk about three projects here in, in this uh, session. So the next uh, project that we're doing is the Batch Magic project. Yeah, I mean, you see, I have it here. Um, people always like it. Um, it's not uh, as deep tech as the um, as the pocket science lab, right? Like where you need to know about physics and this and that. It's more like cool, right? I mean, like bling bling. There is some um, light, uh, people like it, and if it's open source, everyone says, cool, I want to have it. So let me tell you what is the state of this project. Or let me tell you first like, wh what it does, right? I mean, like you can see it here, the um, batch magic LED batch here. Um, so basically, the idea is um, to have a hardware, and the hardware is uh, controlled through Bluetooth. They are like older models on the market where you can control everything through a USB. Um, but like our thing was like, wow, this is Bluetooth, this is cool, and it's Bluetooth low energy, so you don't even need to pair it. You just open the app and um, yeah, you go about and uh, do some text. So um, yeah, there, there is an app on the market uh, already, and you can download it on the uh, App Store here, again, the QR code. So how it works is you charge this device through um, the um, uh, through a USB cable again, and uh, then you can control it and change it through Bluetooth. And uh, yeah, of course, it's open source. And what we have is at clipboards, at drawings. But let me go back in the story. The story is that we found um, this in China and we said, this is cool and we really like it. But we found it with this app that you see here. And uh, yeah, there, some things are in Chinese. Some things don't work uh, as we want. We can't change it. Um, actually, this app has a lot of downloads. So it seems like a lot of people buy these kind of badges. But it's not open source. We can't really change it. It's also in different colors, which is confusing because the badge has only one color. So, right, you never know how it really looks like. There's no real proper preview, things like that. So, a lot of things that we wanted and we couldn't change it. So, um, there was this guy here. Um, his uh, um, yeah, nickname is uh, Neil Sam. Yeah? And um, he said, like, uh, yeah. I also don't like that, that it's closed source. I want to know and understand how it's working. So he actually did research on this. Uh, he, he reverse engineered the communication between the, um, the different devices, between the phone and uh, the Bluetooth um, patch. So um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And he wrote it on online. He shared his knowledge. Um, so that's his. Um, GitHub repository then, where where he released his um, yeah sample implementation, and we thought, oh, that is really cool. Now we found a good hack, right? It is a hacker congress, so it's good to share this here. And um, yeah, thank you very much for doing this, uh, Gautier, and uh, for enabling us to do this. Because now what we could do in the next step, we could develop a real full-fledged app with our community. Yeah, and we're organizing a lot of events in Asia. We have um, the biggest open source conference in Singapore every year, for example. So sometimes it's just like that easy. You put out an idea and people come and join, right? I mean, not always that easy. It's easier for Android projects. It's easier for web front ends. It's more difficult for like really the deep stuff, right? But like that's an Android app and we already had uh, a Gautier uh, here hacking it and yeah, we shared it with the Force Asia community and people just flocked to it. It was a side project and they did it. So now we have this app and uh, yeah, we can do many different things. Um, of course, we can control the speed, we can control animation um, and different effects and it's, it's on Google Play, it's on F-Droid and you can, can just download it and try it out. What we have added in the last few months is um, so you can now export badges. Yeah, also something that you couldn't do before. So right, I mean, you have a real cool badge, and now you want all your friends to have the same badge. You go to a conference and you say, "Yeah, we are the guys from you know Namecoin and uh, it's bling bling, and it's really nice effects and it looks cool." So yeah, let's do it. So. You can now do this, you can store it, and you can simply share it and uh, share your batch configuration. Then the other thing is like, 
you say, okay, so we have this cool um, uh, clip art um, and, and this cool icon. Um, so how can we move this over there? Yeah, so now what you can do is you can just draw, draw it. For example, there are more cool things that you can do in future, but for now what you can do is you can draw it. So you can actually go to the app, you find on the sidebar the, the draw functionality and you draw what you want to have. And then you click save and you can have it on the batch, whatever you draw. Okay, that was really cool and that's something that no other app has so far. Okay, and of course, like as you can imagine, lots of different Android phones, lots of different resolutions, and so on. So lots of bugs to fix, and um, yeah, that's kind of an advantage of being on a store. You get all these like uh, crash reports and so on. So a lot of things for us to fix. And uh, interestingly, like because like the group of people who um, worked originally on this device were all like people using the Latin alphabet. For example, in Vietnam, uh, in, yeah, in Malaysia, Singapore, and so on. And uh, not so many people actually from China because the China people say we already have a lot of Chinese apps but then we realized later actually in our app Chinese wasn't supported yeah so that was kind of a funny thing so, which we then did also over the last few months so support of Chinese languages support of um, non-Latin scripts um, for example in India cool that's solved and um, what's this here there's a B missing so the batch um, Android and batch magic of course is on, on our repositories and you can join the GitHub channels where you just have to log in with your GitHub ID so no additional um, registration required and GitHub is also open source so that's okay for us and another thing that we are always doing in the first Asia community we make contests so we make events and we say hey we want to come to our events, we actually want to connect to contributors, um, but like we don't want to have this huge process where we say, oh yeah, are you a good contributor or not? Have you done uh, changes only in the readme file or have you really done some good code changes and so on? It's all like we don't want to have this top-down approach. So what we're doing is we do contests and we have the winners of our previous years and like uh, other people like in the core teams be the mentors. So we have a huge mentor list and we do these contests and then people flock to the project and do contributions and um, the goal is of course to have long-term contributions as you know these days people have all kinds of good good uh, opportunities they have these opportunities here with um, with uh, yeah the crypto technology coin technology they get all good job offers so we constantly need like new people also in our community to train them and then like um, to to grow the projects all around okay so code heat contest Maybe also something for some of you guys. By the way, it's still up until the uh, until the first of February. So if you want to join, main price is fly to our Singapore event in March. Yeah. So these are three main prices. Pretty nice. Um, a lot of people like it. Okay. So about this project now. What's next? Of course, always talk to us. It's in every project. Um, getting started with Android, this is a really good project to start with Android. Um, of course, we want to add more devices. Um, a lot of people came there and said, we have this small fan. You see this, I don't know, it's like difficult to take a really good picture, but they have this small, I call POV, like the small fan, right? And I put it there to grab the people's attention um, because what I want is, I want our app to support more devices bigger screens, support fans, and so on. These small fans have an LED. I don't know if you, can you see that? It's here, they have an LED, and that's how they project when they turn around like um, some text. And they're really big ones in China that you can find. I really like them, I really want to have them, but I'm not so motivated if I don't have a free and open source app, yeah? And to make the app is maybe not always so difficult, but somebody has to sit down maybe for one or two weeks and really like, check out what is the, um, you know, what, what's the protocol or what's the communication um, uh, of the closed source proprietary app that is available today um, with the device. And after that, we can really move on and, and, and uh, develop more. And um, yeah, opening up the batch hardware. Any hardware people here, hardware electronics people, yeah? So maybe we can talk about that if you would be interested in a small project. So we have two kinds of people. One, one, one kind of people say, oh, this project is too easy, it's too boring for me, I don't want to make this kind of batch. And the other kind of people say, oh, I'm just a beginner, I don't know yet how to do it. So yeah, we are looking for the right person to really like also make these batches completely open and produce the batch itself openly as well. And um, yeah, why not? And of course, making a firmware is part of that. Okay, and now the last project. How much time uh, I have, have I left? 
So yeah, a few minutes left. So last project I want to introduce to you, thank you. It's um, the NeuroLab project. Um, and um, so the NeuroLab project is now something else. Um, maybe you guys have heard about OpenBCI, Brain Computer Interface, BCI, right? And there's another project, Braindrino, for example. And um, yeah, so OpenBCI is pretty cool. They have different devices. We're also in touch with them. Um, but the um, devices are not always so cheap. It's quite expensive, right? Can go up to like five, six, seven thousand um, uh, dollars. And um, that's cool. Then the Braindrino device, we haven't seen so much development on the open source parts. And uh, um, we also know those guys. They're really doing awesome work. They're doing all kinds of things. Um, so, so we are a lot inspired by them. And there's also a lot of overlap of previous codes. But in the meantime, actually, we developed this project further. So let me go back a step for every, anyone who doesn't know about neuro lab or neuro things. So basically, neuro is for brain, right? Brain computer interface. and what you can do, for example, have uh, sensors here uh, or even have them all around your head and then try to collect the, um, the uh, uh, brain waves. Yeah? And the challenge is that um, these brain waves uh, use like uh, electrical, right? Like, as you know, like there's some kind of electrical, how do you call it in English, current or uh, uh, electrical signal, right? So in your brain, but it's really weak. Yeah, so you can't just like uh, get all the data like yeah, let's download everything that's going on. So so you really need sensitive hardware, and um, yeah, so that's that's the challenge, right? And of course, if we have like a lot of money um, and really sensitive hardware, and we can do something for thirty thousand euros, the challenge is to do something for two hundred. Yeah, so that's what we want to achieve with this project, and we're advancing with this project. So um, and again. We want to open things up. So what you see here, for example, is an Android screen. And uh, um, right, I mean, like if I tell you 1995, do you want a telephone where you can order um, a, uh, um, a, a, a like where you can order a cap or where you can connect with people or where you can send a photo? Everyone will say yes, but people think a bit like uh, 1995. They they think they will send it somehow or the app will call somebody and then somebody picks up the phone and so on. 1995, people don't think like today, right? I mean, it's like actually just 15 years ago. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 longer. Time passes. Oh, my God, 2019, yeah. So, right, I mean, right, 20 plus years ago. So, things happen. And uh, um, so, what I mean is, the point I want to make is this. Once you have a device that can collect brain waves in the reach of a lot of people, once people can connect with this device through the uh, mobile phone, people will come up with a lot of ideas that we cannot even imagine today. So now my question is this, do you want this kind of technology to be in the hands of Google and Amazon and like completely closed source and send your brain data to them? You already, even you don't have the Android phone, I'm sure every one of us is sending their data already because your friends have stored your information on their Google Calendar, on their Google Contacts, and so on. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm doing it myself. But like, do we want them to continue in that way and to control us? No, no. We want to be in charge. We want to be in charge. And okay, Google can use this technology, but this technology must be open at least. It must be accessible. We should be able to set it up, just like I'm able to set up my own email server. If I can do it, I have the option. I'm not dependent, right? So. This is the whole idea. And um, yeah, and of course, there are cool things to do it. So I can rant a lot about the freedom and all these kind of things. But let's also focus like people want to do something cool. So what we can do cool things with it is, for example, we can do some games. Yeah, So we can have focus games. We can have relaxed meditation. We can observe our memory. So doctors, for example, all over the world could collect data. And they could collect the memory graph and so on. So this is what we are working on here. Um, yeah, a few screenshots, but I tell you, this project is still very early stage. Even though we do it for a few years, it's still very early stage. But here, for example, you see the memory graph. You can collect the, the brain waves. You can try to interpret it. There is actually a lot of open data available that universities collected. You can import it, for example, in the app, view it. Um, you can yeah, use uh, different uh, um, 
kind of spectrum analysis, do uh, check how your brain waves are, and uh, you will see, for example, like people. Oh, then people always tell me, oh yeah, maybe people think differently all over the world, and uh, yeah, people have all kinds of ideas how differently we are. But like what I see so far is we actually all pretty similar we're all pretty much the same like if you focus you focus and it doesn't matter if you're from china or if you're from germany or or from canada you focus yeah and it's it's pretty similar so um, but of course maybe there are differences and if you guys have access to the technology you can maybe find these differences and we could control in future just like with speech recognition uh, we can control the same thing through our brain maybe right i mean train these things and so on so Do you want us as a community to be able to do that or just a few companies? I think the answer is pretty cool. But what is the cool thing we can do? What, what works now is, for example, um, here, focus and relaxation app. So you see this, um, um, it's kind of a um, spaceship yeah, that's flying just above a planet. And uh, if you focus, if you really say, yes, spaceship go up, the spaceship will go up and fly faster. And if you relax, you can try to relax. And then the spaceship will go slow and sit down. Okay, so yeah, these are a few ideas we are developing. Oh, here's even an, an animation. Um, please ensure Neuralab is connected. And, and of course, always this idea. So we have this idea: import, export data, make people available, uh, make 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 the data that people collect available, give them the power to do whatever they want. Yeah. So this is this is always the idea. This is always possible with whatever we do. So here you actually see this um, going up and down. Okay, and then use it as a data logger. Yeah, I mean, like, let people go around and collect this data. And what you usually see in Germany is a lot of discussion about, oh, is this secure? Is this safe? Um, do I really want to do this? Should we rather not do this or so? Well, I have to say, these kind of things will happen anyways. But my question is, Should we make it happen or should we leave it to others? I rather say we stay in control. Of course, there are meditation possibilities. So this is what we're working on. Um, if you travel, for example, how do I meditate? It could be a sound feedback and so on. And the sound then could adapt according to your uh, brain waves um, and, and so on. So uh, yeah, yeah, here are a few screenshots. So it's all work in progress. And a few more, or more screens. So a lot of ideas. And if you have any feedback, please come to me and talk to me. So, and this is the end of the presentation. And I have to say, this is just a small part of what we are doing. We are um, mainly a software community. We have more than 4,000 people registered on our GitHub. But you know how it is with big numbers. People come, people go, they don't unregister once they are registered. So we always need new people, we always need to engage with more people. And uh, yeah, we really want to get people into our projects. Um, like uh, we have also started a company with other community members in Singapore. And we've started another company for Europe in Berlin. Um, Yeah, this company is now part of a EU Horizon 2020 project where we work together with um, yeah, communities and, and um, social enterprises all over Europe as well as with university, for example, TU Berlin and so on because our goal is really to make open hardware mainstream. We don't just want it to sit as a hacker uh, thing on, on the edge. I want my parents to use it. For example, um, my father has a... Um, As a, you know, like, like many old people, they have um, uh, um, sickness when they, when they get older, um, you know, they, they forget things and so on. So, you know, maybe if we could analyze this 20 years before, and it's possible with our apps, for example, then, it, you know, it could help people. And I don't want to leave this to some big, big companies. Uh, we can collaborate, but like, you know, I want to us to be in, in charge. And this is a, um, yeah, one thing that we really want to do with open tech in Germany and FOSS Asia in Singapore. We are a community, but we're also social enterprises. Uh, we do a lot of software, but our goal is to really make hardware and open source software, open hardware, open source software, um, really mainstream build sustainable models around it. Um, you know, I mean, it's topic here, sustainability. Um, you can, everyone can repair it, all these topics. But for me, sustainability also means that developers can earn an income. We see a lot of developers that we trained now work at Google, now work at Facebook. By their contracts, they are not able to contribute back. 
Yeah, and we want to change the entire ecosystem, and that's why it's so great to be here at the, at the decentralization cluster, together with the crypto community, with the coin community, and yeah, we're really grateful that we can be part of this year. And uh, I want to close my talk with saying thank you to all the volunteers and thank you to everyone who makes it ha happen, and, and to um, Tim and Matthias. Uh, where are you? Yeah, it's so bright here. And thank you very much. So it's really a great start into the event, and good to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mario. Man, this is why I love open source, man. There's just such this air of humility about it that says we don't have all the, I mean, we have ideas, but we may not have all the best ideas. So we want to release the tools that we're making so other people with good ideas can go ahead and do that. It takes a lot of humility to say that I don't have all the best ideas. Um, and I, I personally don't have the humility to do that yet.